Welcome to New Perspectives on RVN TV. I'm your host, Barry Lefkowitz. Uh, we come to you each week with topics and issues that you generally find in the news. As you know, uh, the purpose of New Perspectives is to help provide you with both a perspective and hopefully we inform and educate you on topics and issues. Um, you know from uh, different shows that we've done on New Perspectives, I've talked about the fact that our country does not do an appropriate job of taking care of our returning vets, and they don't provide the public with a sense of our history and the sacrifices uh, and the general knowledge of the men and women that have supported and protected our nation's freedom. Uh, a statistic which is very disturbing is that every day uh, 21 plus veterans commit suicide. That's every single day. Uh, today, it's my pleasure to have two gentlemen uh, who play an important role in helping turn the lack of education and knowledge around, uh, discussing the Armed Forces Heritage Museum uh, is my good friend, Brigadier General uh, Robert Dutko, who's to the far right, and he is the president of the uh, Armed Forces Heritage Museum. And General Duck Brigadier General Dutko was the state chair for the New Jersey Employee Support of the Garden Reserve uh, from 2001 to 2007, uh, of which uh, I served under you. Uh, he was awarded the National Bureau uh, Minuteman Award for Outstanding Performance and the Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Glenn Outstanding Air National Guard uh, Chief uh, Supply Award. Uh, you've served as the state chair of the New, uh, New Jersey Employee Support of the Guard, and you still have civic affiliations with the National Guard Association of the U.S. and New Jersey, and the Patriotic Committee of, uh, New, of Ewing Township, right. and the New Jersey Air Force Association, and a bunch of other things. <laughs> uh, plus, you and I served together on the New Jersey Friends of the Garden Reserve. Sure. To Brigadier General Dutko's left uh, is Roy Plummer. Uh, Roy is the chairman of the board. Correct. And has quite a distinguished uh, background. Uh, you're a retired human service executive who worked for several Fortune uh, 100 companies. Uh, you were a senior human resource business partner for Lockheed Martin, uh, which everyone knows is a major employer and major defense contractor uh, here located in Burlington County. Um, and you've were an industrial engineer for Oscar Mayer and <laughs> company, which is yeah. quite something. But, um, and U U.S. Continental Army Com uh, Command Maintenance uh, Engineering Agency. Uh, the concept of having the Armed Forces Heritage Museum in a, many ways is very, very novel. Uh, I'm curious how and why was the organization started? Well, Barry, about 10 years ago, um, the uh, few of our members were at the uh, foundation for the Starlifter uh, designation, where they designated bricks for the Starlifter C-141. And they were approached about uh, um, establishing a museum on the Fort Dix complex. Right. Um, we. Uh, we formed a committee, and I wasn't on the, uh, with the organization at that time, but they formed a committee, and uh, with the help of the foundation, they uh, established a uh, 501c3 uh, nonprofit organization. Correct. Uh, we worked with the base. Uh, 
we identified 25 acres just outside of the Fort Dix gate where we could move the fence behind it and it would have access to, to the public. Um, we designed the building, we uh, presented it to the base and they approved it. They forwarded it to Air Mobility Command in Illinois and they also approved it. From there it went to the Pentagon and when we reached the Pentagon, um, they just didn't want to support any more facilities on the base and they uh, just shot our project down. So what we decided to do was that if we couldn't bring the people to the museum, we would bring the museum to the people. I was fortunate to uh, uh, obtain a trailer from uh, our town, Ewing Township. Uh, the mayor had uh, prepared a new stage for us and, and I asked the mayor, what will you do with the old trailer? And the mayor said, uh, I don't know. He said, give me a letter and uh, maybe we can donate it to you. So I gave him a letter, they presented it to council and council approved it and they donated the trailer to us. From there we, uh, we started to design what we thought was important information where we could uh, specialize on our living history program, which Roy will talk about later. Um, we had a terrific story on Fort Dix. Uh, we have information on the joint base. We have another panel that shows future technology. And then on the right-hand side, our new program, which will be a 53-foot trailer, uh, which we call Big Mo, uh, which is in the future. It'll allow for expandable sides, and approximately a thousand square feet of interactive items that people can come in and learn the history of uh, our great military. So uh, we, uh, we've been very successful in obtaining some funding uh, from contributors that gave us a significant you know, amount of money and we were able to uh, provide this trailer together. We launched it in uh, June of 2017 and it was uh, it's been out on the road and it's been well received. Uh, we're happy with it. Um, we have a reader rail that tells the stories of the military. We have a 90 inch monitor that provides bits and pieces of the living history that we do. And then of course uh, the Fort Dix story is phenomenal. Fort Dix was built in 60 days. And uh, we tell that story and really uh, and, when, and when was Fort Dix uh, originally started? Uh, 1917. Yeah. Right, it was for, and that's what I think the public needs to understand. Yeah. Fort Dix was instrumental in World War I right. as well as World War II, the yeah. Vietnam right. War. Uh, and I don't think people realize, you know, the significant history right. that this area has in terms of our war efforts. It was, uh, and that, we have a monitor that, that has several visual aids and tells a story. And then uh, we, our future technology is, uh, is developed around all the, all the new aircraft and, and uh, ships and fire department, you know, army items. And uh, it's well received. We, but the big uh, byproduct of, the, of our trailer is that we meet people. And there are people out there that need help. So we're not only telling history we're out helping people. We run into veterans who have situations that need attention and uh, we do our best job to put them in the right direction and help them out. So uh, the trailer's been great and uh, you know, we're busy with it. Uh, we just had out this weekend to, to State Fair. Uh, we'll have it at the uh, Italian Festival and, and uh, at Mercer County Park in two weeks. That'll be a three day event. And we recently had it at Cooper River, uh, where they had a 50th anniversary uh, of, the fifth, of the Vietnam War, where they displayed a simulation, simulation of the 50 of the wall. It was terrific. Uh, we were there for two days. And uh, Roy will probably elaborate on that because uh, we have a great story to tell about the baby lift out of Vietnam, uh, which is another great story. So. Uh, I'm proud to be a part of the organization. Uh, they kind of talked me into becoming president. Uh, which, <laughs> which was uh, a wise decision. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, um, I had to tell my wife that on New Year's Eve. Uh, she wasn't too happy about that, but she's there for us, always been for me. Uh, 
42 years I served in the military, she was there for me all the time. So uh, I've got a good partner. Uh, but uh, I also do uh, a lot of work with our town. Uh, I'm heavy uh, I'm involved. Which is the, Ewing Township, Ewing correct? Ewing Township. I'm the president of the Patriotic Committee there. And we do uh, Memorial Day. We do uh, the fireworks of Fourth of July. We do Patriot Day. We do Veterans Day. We do uh, Pearl Harbor. And Pearl Harbor we do at the Ewing High School, where we are able to be in an auditorium with 200 children, uh, have a speaker. We have uh, the mayor there, the council members, and the children, uh, master singers sing the national anthem. Uh, we show the film of Pearl Harbor, and then we uh, conclude with a wreath presentation and taps. And uh, then we open up to questions with the uh, children. So uh, it's really been a, a great, great opportunity to tell a story and educate the young people. We're going to have to stop there. Uh, we have to do that thing known as uh, commercial <laughs> break, but we're going to come back to you, Roy, so you can tell us about the I'll try to stay living with history yeah. and the recent thing with uh, uh, the recent event. So stick with us, and we'll be right back with Brigadier General Robert Ducko and Chairman of the Board Roy Plummer. Be right with you. <laughs> You can leave our studio and within 48 hours have a permanent digital copy of your live segment to link to your social media, embed into your company website, or use in email marketing. Investing in your brand is so very important, and we can't wait to have you as a guest. Shelter dogs aren't broken. They've simply experienced more life. If they were human, we would call them wise. They would be the ones with tales to tell and stories to write. The ones dealt a bad hand who responded with courage. Do not pity a shelter dog. Adopt one. Say we've got grit and we'll take it as a compliment because it's our uncommon drive, our spark within that brings us together and sets us apart. We are temple made. And when others take shortcuts, when others take breaks, when others take the easy way, we take charge. Add us on social media to watch bloopers, behind the scenes footage, previews, and more. Welcome back to New Perspectives on RVN-TV. I'm your host, Barry Lefkowitz. Uh, we're having a really fine discussion here about the Armed Forces uh, Heritage Museum uh, as a vehicle to help educate the public. Uh, we had left off with Brigadier General Dutko talking about the history and going from the one trailer now to uh, we have a 53-foot trailer uh, coming up and that you actually go on site to places and I think uh, the General Roy wanted you to talk about the living history and then we can uh, we'll cue the production people to uh, have them uh, show the mini mo and what's <coughs> going to be big mo. sure uh, to give you a little background uh, I'm not new to the organization. I wasn't there when it started back in 2010. I actually retired from Lockheed that year and hadn't made any definitive plans. Uh, kind of wanted to see what might come along and uh, happened upon this organization when they were meeting at the Garden State Diner. They had a little ad in the paper that they were having this meeting. I said, well, let me go over and check it out and see, see if that's something I want to be a part of. And having been a former officer in the military. I served in the Army back in the Vietnam era, but they knew better they sent me to Korea instead of Vietnam, <laughs> thankfully. But uh, so I got uh, immersed into the work that they were doing, and one of the things that uh, they had started to do uh, 
and it already started to build quite a, a library was these what we call living history videos. And what they found as we were going out and about and trying to get our message of military history and educating the public and uh, working on this, what was to become a mobile museum, what I affectionately call Minimo initially, was uh, people had their fathers, grandfathers, uncles, neighbors that served with distinction in the military and were telling us they had compelling stories to tell. Can we bring and, up uh, the picture of Minimo? Yeah, and uh, we, what we've done, the twofold, the, the, this is Minimo, the 32 foot converted uh, mobile trailer that uh, General Dutko, Dutko talked about earlier. And when we have it on display, we have what we call trailer versions of these living history videos. Okay. And uh, we've got, uh, I'll say, in or around a dozen that are already completed that have been edited uh, following the initial uh, interviews. And, and a like number, maybe more, that are in various stages of editing. But, uh, and they're on our website. You can go there and, and view them. Uh, but we, we've edited them down mostly to about a 30-minute format that we now, starting this past fall, started taking to the public. My concern was we were doing such a great job in producing these things and putting them on our website, but that's very passive. You've got to rely on the people that first know something about your organization or may be interested enough mm -hmm. to go to the website right. and view them and take the time to do so. And uh, that's still there, but I wanted to, an opportunity to bring them to the public. So we started forming partnerships with uh, area historical societies like the uh, Burlington County Historical Society. Right. Uh, we, we started programs there last fall. The uh, Mansfield Museum, which a lot of people don't know about, but uh, that organization wanted to get more connected to the community and the public, and they started bringing us in to do programs. Uh, I have one coming up in Bordentown with their historical society. Uh, Burlington County Library is another venue that we've used. So we're exploring, and we, we take them to the public and educate them on the history of the military, and in particular, the veterans who, as I say, have served with distinction. And just to give you a couple of examples, if you can go back to the Minimo there on the screen, yeah, could you bring that up back? Uh, Just back for a here? moment. Great, on the you. left there, you see that large 90-inch screen. There's a gentleman there in front of the camera. His name is Ernest Kaufman. He uh, just turned 99 in June. Oh. He's a Holocaust survivor and a World War II hero. And he's written a book about it, and it's an amazing story. Just That's one true. of the things, other than surviving the Holocaust early in the game before we went to war with the, the Germans, uh, during the war, he was an intelligence officer. And uh, one of his achievements, uh, it, it's, it's, it's incredible, he was able to save an entire German town from an occupying German army led by a three-star general without a shot being fired. He got them to surrender to his commanding officer without a shot being fired that's during the war. That's just one of the stories in this book. Uh, that's, that's one. Uh, um, living history example. Another one, the gentleman has since passed on uh, at 96, Howard Brooks, but his wife is still with us and she goes out and presents. We have his video interview and she is there to answer questions. But he's a, an electrician's mate uh, whose ship, the USS Houston, was sunk off the uh, coast of the Philippines about six months after Pearl Harbor. Right. And uh, he clung literally to the side of a raft because there were other wounded and other Navy personnel in the raft. He clung to it in the water for like three days, shark infested waters. They, they washed up on the, some small island in the South Pacific and the natives there promised them that they'd turn them over, I think it was to a Dutch ally uh, group that was there. Well. The Japanese were offering a bounty on Americans turned over to them. So he was turned over to the Japanese, shipped off to Burma. And if you recall, you might recall the movie. I think it might have won an Academy Award or two, The Bridge on the River Kwai. Of course. Well, he lived it. He was slave labor working on that railroad and the bridge for over three years till the end of the war. Absolutely riveting story. So those are a couple of examples of what we do with our living history programs. Uh, and uh, we continue to expand uh, the uh, uh, aperture of, of where we take these programs and delivering to the public. As I say, we have 
what we refer to as uh, trailer uh, shots on the uh, Minimo Mobile Museum. So it gives us an opportunity for people who visit us at a public event to introduce them to what we're doing in that regard and invite them to visit the website and not only view them there, but they can find out when we're doing programs of that nature in the public. Uh, we just uh, finished one a couple weeks ago with uh, Ernest Kaufman. We're doing another one tomorrow night at the Lyceum in downtown Mount Holly. Uh, a little different spin. We have a gentleman on the board. He's a retired Lutheran minister, and he's an expert on the, the Civil War and the Battle of Gettysburg. So he's given a talk on the Battle of Gettysburg at the Lyceum tomorrow night at 6.30. Free to the public. Come on out and uh, be captivated by that. Um, so uh, those are the dimensions of living history. Another aspect of the uh, uh, getting the story out about our veterans, we have a program coming up in um, November around uh, Veterans Day uh, that week at Shawnee High School. We've been doing it for the past recent, I don't know, half a dozen years, I guess. Least, yeah. And uh, we work with the school administration and the history department we put a call out to veterans in and around the area, and we typically get between two, maybe as many as three dozen that come out and volunteer their time for the day. And they go into the history classes and relate their story about their experience serving in this great country of ours. And uh, the students are very interested. Uh, there's a lot of aspects about military history that heretofore that it, aren't getting into the classrooms. Um, I'll give you one quick story to that regard. Uh, we had this woman, the, uh, uh, the widow of uh, the uh, Bridge Over the River Kwai uh, survivor, did a program uh, at one of the schools up north. I won't mention the county. Enjoyed the day uh, presenting the story about her husband, and Ernest Kaufman was there as well. And at the end of the day, a teacher came up to her and said, so tell me, how did World War II end anyway? Th this is what we run into. It, the, the, the history, and in, in particular military history, is not getting into our school system. So when we get opportunities like with Shawnee, it's a great opportunity to get that story out there. And we're looking to expand that into, I just had a contact from someone at Lenape uh, to do a similar program there. Uh, so that's what we do to try to keep the military history alive and in educating the, the public and, and our students. Um, as a quick point, um, the, the living history is so important because the number of vets who are slowly crossing over and we no longer have the ability to be able to talk to them, so I, I take my hat off to you on that. Um, What's going to be the advantage? Uh, you now, that was Mini Mo that we had up on the screen. Uh, if we could bring up uh, Big Mo, uh, and if you could tell us. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can put that on full screen or not. It's kind of hard to see. But uh, Mini Mo was an opportunity to showcase in a, an abbreviated fashion uh, what we're about as far as getting the history to the public. Right. And uh, w we had to limit that story because we only had 32 feet of space right. to work with. Uh, and there's only so much you can do. So we focused on the last 100 years of history from what was Camp Dix initially, now Fort Dix, to current day, the Joint Base and all the missions that are going on there. Uh, but the ultimate goal is uh, this 53, what will be a 53 foot tractor trailer unit with expandable sides that'll give us, as General Dutko said, about 1,000 square feet of, of museum space. It'll be interactive, self-guided. You'll actually go inside to, uh, to tour it. And uh, the idea right now is to relate the history of the military with a, with a primary focus in New Jersey military history over the last 200 plus years. Um, in that regard, uh, this retired Lutheran minister, I, I challenged him, even though he's an expert on the Civil War, I said, we need something on the Revolutionary War. And he put together a great narrative, working narrative, on New Jersey military history in the Revolutionary War. And I had a, a, a student, I think he was, it was a Eagle Scout project, marry his narrative to graphics and uh, image, imagery that map to that history, that story. And we'll be bringing that out to the public in a presentation format, but I envision it as 
being the basis for one of the exhibits in Big Mo when we get that launched. It's, a, it's an aggressive, I'll say, three to five year plan. Um, as an example, in comparison, you know, we've been able to raise money through outfits like uh, um, Lockheed Martin, Holman Automotive, right. some of the banks, investors, Roma, Beneficial. They've given us money to help fund Minimo. And it costs to retrofit and, and outfit that in or around 75000 That was doable. It was still a challenge. We're an sure. all-volunteer organization. Yeah, Big and, Mo. Uh, and yeah. I want to emphasize that. All-volunteer yes. organization. No paid staff. Everything you get is, give us, and we'll get to that a little bit, goes directly into the projects and work that we do. We don't take a dime. Uh, so, but Big Mo, um, that's a little more aggressive. It's a, we'd like to think a three to five year plan. Uh, you're looking at, depending on what we want to do with it, somewhere between a quarter of a million and a half a million dollars to outfit, fabricate the exhibits, get that piece done. And then uh, probably in or around 200,000 a year to operate and maintain it going around the state. This will travel throughout the state of New Jersey. Similar to if some people are aware of the New Jersey Hall of Fame is a traveling museum. Correct. And we, we've worked with the, uh, the creator of that, Steve Edwards, to uh, act as a kind of consultant for us and helping us get our act and head together. And uh, he's, he's chopping at the bit. He, he touches base with me and says, Roy, how you coming with Big Mo? And I'm saying, we're not there yet, Steve. You know, <laughs> so right. when you get there, we, we want to uh, help you out. And our big challenge, Barry, is I keep telling our organization, we need a location to work out of. We need a staff to handle the, co the contributions they're going to take to put Big, t uh, Big Mo on the road. Correct. And uh, we're in the process of negotiating with uh, some people now for a location. And uh, once we get that, we are uh, probably going to be faced with uh, hiring somebody as a full-time staff to answer the phone, work the computer, collect the money. Now, <laughs> if we could put the, uh, that's it. There you, you go. You knew what I was going to ask for. Okay. Uh, <laughs> General, if you could tell us about the uh, annual dinner that's coming up on October 12th at Deerwood. Yes. Right. We, uh, we started this about four years ago, Barry. Uh, it was one of my projects that I said to the gentleman that um, I work with another organization called PEI Kids uh, who conduct a, uh, a dinner and silent auction. And I, uh, I said to our organization, we should start this. So we did, and uh, this year we had the pleasure of uh, honoring one of our members, Dr. Lewis Wettstein, who's a retired colonel, flight surgeon, and a cardiologist. Uh, and a uh, surgeon of, of the heart. And uh, also, uh, Gene Stanfield, who's retired as the uh, sheriff of Burlington County. Longtime sheriff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And um, two great individuals. Uh, we'll have a fun night. Uh, we have Fred Miller, who's a, a terrific entertainer. And uh, we're looking to do a great job and uh, bring the public out and have a nice evening, uh, nice food and, and uh, camaraderie and uh, a great evening to tell a story. Uh, General, if you could look into the camera right over there and tell people how they can contact you at the American uh, Force, uh, Armed Forces uh, Heritage uh, Museum. Okay, our, our website is afhmus.org. afhmus.org. If you go on the website, you'll see all the information there, the living history. Uh, and also details about the, uh, the dinner. You can also contact me directly at 609-273-1004 or on my email address, rdutkosr at aol.com. I'm be happy to hear from you and uh, things are really getting busy now. So I, want to, I want to thank you both. Unfortunately, uh, we had gotten the cut oh, signal okay. earlier, uh, but I want to thank uh, General Dutko and Roy Plummer because it really is important that we understand both the history and the role of the military in protecting the freedoms that we all enjoy. Uh, and once again, I thank you for uh, allowing us to come into your uh, homes each and every week. 
You take care, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, sir.